Dzień dobry, miło mi Good afternoon or good morning. It's very nice to welcome you to the results of Piki Picargo Group for 2017. Today, Mr. Krzysztof Maminski, the CEO, will run. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very pleased to be able to welcome you to the headquarters of our company in conjunction with the presentation and the summary, the recap of our results for the year 2017. So if you'll allow me, we'll begin by giving you the results of Pique Picargo for 2017. And we've described them as follows. So we have rigorous uh, cost discipline on growing revenues. And if we look at the information that has been put forward on this slide, we can see that the PKP cargo uh, uh, has increased its um, per percentage of uh, the market, both freight mass. So and if we look at the revenues, we can see that the revenue growth is much bigger. And so the group company as well as the group PKP Cargo in 2017 has done some 4.5 or 4.7 billion in uh, revenues. And that's growth of 7.4 percent. And if we look at the profitability of nearly 15 percent EBITDA, and so, so we have 702 million Zwadis and Ribbity. So the growth year in year is 43.4 percent. So the net profit of the group in turn for 2017 was 82 million Zwadi. And it's better than the previous year's result by 215 million Zwadis year on year. So we have started with a clearly negative result. We were in the red and now we're in the black at 82 million Zwadis. And so our capex capital expenditures in 2017 was 562 million Zwadi. And here we've seen increase of roughly 5% year on year. So these good results, both in terms of our EBITDA as well as our net profit, well, why has that happened? That's because, on one hand, because we've had the 7.4% surge in our revenue year and year. At the same time, this has been coupled with rigorous cost discipline because our costs have grown by 0.9% to 4.58 billion zwadis. But our costs well, our revenues grew by 7.4 percent, our costs only by 0 0.9 percent, our OPEX. So as we've exercised very great uh, cost discipline, we've been able to drive up our profit, and we've arrived at a figure of 82 million Zwadi. And so some of the key accomplishments that we've been able to deliver in 2017, well, we've been able to utilize the potential in f that the market has given us and we can see that certain things were needed so the need for aggregates as well as um, construction materials the utilization of coal the utilization of uh, polish seaports to a greater extent so this is a matter of utilizing our business conditions and so this is one of the key accomplishments that we've been able to achieve in order to make sure that it's possible to uh, meet the needs of our customers and if we look at our international development, we continue to grow the tr volumes transported along the new Silk Road. And so we're also doing some expansion activities in our terminal in Małoszewice. And if we look at our rolling stock policy, we continue to optimize our transport logistics, especially in a period in which it's necessary for us to pay a lot of attention and cooperate quite closely with uh, the um, rail track operator, PLP, and with others as well. So the track operator, the track owner, and we have to do 
more investments, infrastructural investments, uh, in order to be able to handle this growing stream of rail freight. And so we have to have more rolling stock, more human capital. Uh, we have to have, uh, as I said, we have more rolling stock engaged, so the turnover. We have to be more precise in our optimization efforts and as we engage in the transportation logistics. And so if we look at uh, rebuilding the potential in our rolling stock, we've started up a new modern technological line. And also in Yaswa, we have in 2017 a new renovation refurbishment plant. And so if we look at the position of the PK Cargo Group, we have strengthened our position as a leader. As I said at the outset of our meeting, so PK Cargo's market share in Poland has grown compared to 2016. Uh, we can say that only by a small amount, but at the same time, this is still tantamount uh, to maintaining our leadership position on the marketplace. And I can tell you that the increase in our freight volume as well as freight turnover are bigger than the averages. Uh, so our group, our the PK, PKP Cargo market share um, is up. The next company is Lotus Cole, and they have less than 10%. Then we have the next players in the market, you know, with 5 6%. The other 27.5% is distributed across a large number of fragmented uh, operators. And so if we look at the rail freight uh, market over the period from 2013 to 2017, we can say that there is a reversal of the trend that was in place from 2013 to 2016. So the market was uh, f constricting in terms of uh, freight mass, but uh, we've now seen uh, a reversal of that and seen some growth. And so that increase in rail freight shows by how much the averages have grown, as well as the percentage held by um, PKP Cargo. So if we look at the freight uh, volume in 2017 in Poland, it's grown by 7.9%, almost 8%. And so if we look at PKP's growth, it's nearly 9.5%, and the other players by 6.8%. And so this is one of the reasons where we can see that we've been able to strengthen our position as a leader, because Cargo's uh, position has grown by a greater extent in terms of freight volume than others. And the same is true if you look at freight turnover. And so the average growth of 8.3% on average, and the peak, and we that's the average, and we had 9.3%, and the other players had an increase of 8.1%. Now I'd like to share with you, ladies and gentlemen, some of the positive changes that took place on the major markets in terms of intermodal and so we can say that freight turnover uh, was up quite substantially by 30.8 percent and so this is one of the most rapidly growing uh, markets if we look at aggregates and construction materials we can say the growth was nearly 27 percent if we look at liquid fuels in turn uh, we can say that we are close to 23%. If we look at metals and ores, 17% were up. The rest was in chemicals. Uh, we were a bit uh, than 13.8%. And so if we look at f uh, solid fuels, when we talk about hard coal, lignite, and uh, coke, we can say it's the length of the delivery routes, simpler rights. Are, so the amount of exports of coal fell, and so that meant that the freight turnover has dwindled a bit. But this is not so much in cargo. This is a general trend across the market. And so we can say that the PK per cargo continues to be the leader despite that fall off of 8.2% in solid fuels. And so, as I mentioned, intermodal, this is intermodal. This is one of the important areas of our great growth. As I said, we have growth in excess of 
this is primarily uh, shown uh, on the next slide through our uh, ports. If we look at the Polish ports, the freight transport through Polish ports, it fell by 3.1 percent year on year from 2016 to 2017. The real impact came from the fact that I just mentioned a moment ago. We saw that freight turnover uh, fell off a bit in solid fuels, so coke, uh, coke, um, coal, and lignite. And so if we are to disregard um, hard coal, we could say that in the other products, we can say that uh, we saw the market expanding by nearly 10.5%. So ladies and gentlemen, if we look at the, the increase in container transport in Poland up by 21% and freight uh, turnover uh, is up uh, by some 17% year on year. If we look at the, um, at the new Silk Road, we can say that we're up 80% from and to China if we look at the container volume. So this is a market that will continue to develop, continue to grow. This is a market that we track closely, observe it in terms of the transport that we're delivering, this logistics centers, and also looking at frontier border crossings. These are things that we pay particular attention to. And this is something that's in our long-term plans in terms of developing our inter intermodal transport position. If we look at aggregates and construction materials, this is something that was quite important in 2017. It will continue to be of importance in upcoming years. And uh, we can say that the significant infrastructural investments in road uh, structure, infrastructure, as well as for the national program for construction of roads and motorways. So there's a major increase in the uh, money being spent on that from 107 to 135 billion. And so there's also a large amount of money to be spent on rail infrastructure. So this is something that's starting to uh, flesh out in 2018. And we can say that in rail infrastructure, uh, this is the year 2018 in which we'll see um, new infrastructural investments uh, taking place. If we look at metals and ores, we can say that we've had a favorable economic situation. So steel production is up in the EU, uh, in Poland and elsewhere across the globe. And so we see that there's more and more products of this type to be uh, transported. And so PKP Cargo and the group overall is able to take up that challenge. And that's why we've been able to uh, witness an increase of freight turnover uh, to the tune of 17.2% on metals and ores compared to 2016. If we look at hard coal, as I've mentioned to you previously, we do see a decline in freight turnover. Although one should say that in the Poland in terms of freight volume, it's only a less than 1% uh, fall off. But if we look at the lower um, extraction and we're, uh, we've, uh, the country as such has uh, extracted 7% less coal in general. And so if we look at billions of tons of coal, hard coal, over the th kilometers, we can see that it was a fall off of 8.3% in hard coal freight turnover. But if we look at this into the future, we can say that this trend may be slightly reversed in uh, future periods. If we look at the financial results, I mentioned at the beginning of my presentation, but even so, I'll allow myself uh, to discuss this one more time. Perhaps I'll dig down into some more details. If we look at the operating revenue, we see that it's up by 7.4%. Our OPEX is up by 0.9%. So EBITDA as a result, well, the net result is now 82 million. So we're in the black again. 
so we're better than last year's net result by 215 million. So we were at minus 134 in 2016. We're now in the black at 82. Our EBITDA is up 43.4 percent, and we're uh, we've broken. We are now at 702 million zlotys. If we look at EBITDA per employee, we can see that it's grown by 44 percent. Our remuneration or salaries for employees um, has fallen. And so we can say uh, that it's true of energy and fuel uh, traction as well as access to infrastructure. If we look at our OPEX, you can see the overall figure of 4.58 billion zlotys, and you see each one of the individual components of our OPEX. And so you've got that in the materials you received as well as on the table on the slide. If we look at the financing in structure, this is something that's quite important. All of us are interested by this because this shows the condition of the company. So the total available funding sources in 2017 was 940, mil 940 million. And so cash and cash equivalents as well as term deposits in banks above all, above three months, we have a total of uh, 940 million zlotys. And the rest of it is uh, is a credit from um, or loan from the European Investment Bank as well as from PKUSA for 100 million zlotys. And so I'd like to draw your attention to net debt to EBITDA ratio. We can see that it's fallen. And this is a very desirable trend because this shows our ability to pay down our debt utilizing a beat. So the lower this ratio, the better. And so this is very good information. If we look at the return on assets, so we were negative at 2.1% and we're now back up to 1.2%. And if you look at our return on equity, we were at 4.1%, now we're at 2.4%. And this is also very desirable. It's good to have positive. You, good to be in the black if you talk about return on assets and return on equity. And you can say it would be good to be around 10%, but the direction and the trend are quite uh, correct. So we can say that 2017 um, basically reversed the negative and turned that into something positive, which is quite possible. So ladies and gentlemen, I've said that in 2017, our capital expenditures will were 562 million zlotys, and they were hired by, higher by 5.5 percent than the capex in 2016. Uh, generally speaking, capex was done for periodic repairs of rolling stock, 359 million zlotys. To a lesser extent, it was for ICT, investment construction activity, purchase and modernization of locomotives and wagons. And so you remember in 2016, primarily we were purchasing multi-system uh, locomotives uh, called Vectron, and the rest of the contract was performed in 20. 17, we spent 135 million zlotys to buy three multi-system locomotives. So then we have others of filling in the rolling stock. This is something that will continue to happen this year and next year. So we have such needs in order to have the largest amount of rolling stock in order to be able to satisfy the needs of our clients and so the freight volume will grow according to the projections 2018 we anticipate that we should see growth of 4.8 percent so in order to serve that we have to have a sufficient amount of rolling stock we have to have locomotives as well as wagons rail cars in order to be able to transport that higher quantum of cargo, and that's the task we have. And we started to do that at the end of 2017, and that's something that we will continue to do next year. So if we look at some of the key commercial areas, we want to utilize our 
intermodal, we want to develop our terminals, expand them. We want to do more cooperation along the new Silk Road, and we want to make sure that we can exploit the Polish ports. If we look at aggregates and construction materials, we see that we have more capex uh, for roads and rail investments, and so that means there's going to be more and more demand for aggregates and construction materials, so we have to do that. And so we can see that per annum, the aggregates market should expand by 5 to 10 percent per annum. And so if we look at these two major investment undertakings, this will be taking place over the period until 2020. If we look at ores and metals, I talked about them. We've got good market conditions in industry, rising steel production across the globe as well, basically in Poland, the EU, and across the globe. We see more infrastructural investments in Poland. That means more steel is needed, and PK Picargo will be responsible for responding to those needs in terms of coal. It's our hope that the downward trend in terms of freight turnover will be stopped and the market will need more coal to have it transported in over greater distances. And we also see that as the mine OKD in Czech Republic will be closed, they will see more transports there and that would be more or less it for 2017. But before I give you the floor for uh, 20, uh, to give you the time for a Q&A, let me tell you a little bit about 2018. We have a uh, forecast. So if the supervisory board and the management board have accepted the business plan, so we wanted to tell you a few words about what we see fleshing out in 2018. Well, we plan to maintain the trend in terms of net profit. So the net profit for 2018 is nearly 161 million what is so this will be an increase of in excess of 71 percent. We anticipate that our revenue will grow by nearly nine percent, almost 3.9 billion what is EBITDA should grow by some 12 percent, 663 million, and our capex. We intend to earmark for investments. Well, we should exceed the one billion zwadi uh, watermark. So this would be an increase of some 99 percent. So this, these are the necessary capex capital expenditures in order to modernize and maintain our rolling stock facilities, basically to be able to achieve the tasks that the company has onboarded as a result of what um, the market wants. And if we look at the freight volume, if, if we look 2017, we had 106.8 million tons. So in 2018, we have plans for 111 million tons. So that's significant growth. Those are figures having in mind on average. So 9.3 million tons per month. These aren't plans along the lines. We would like for this to happen. You've certainly seen the information we reported for January in terms of freight volume. This is a record-breaking January. If we look at Comparable. We've never had a comparable period in the history of PKP P P Cargo. February has been a res has been a great month. More than nine million tons more. Uh, so so in more than nine million tons in January. Eight million more than uh, more than eight in uh, February. Having in mind, of course, that February is a month that's three days shorter this year. So in 2018, we believe that it's going to be another record-breaking year, both in terms of our results, in terms of our capex, and across the operating segments of pickup and cargo. So I'm profoundly convinced that the results of 2017 have amply shown that trends have been reversed. The company has stabilized its position, is now 
building on that position. It's generating positive financial results. And so it's with a lot of hope that we continue to gaze into the future of the upcoming months of operations. So we're now available to respond to any questions you may have. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we'd now like to encourage you to pose any questions you may wish at this time. He now has the microphone. So I respect the delivery of such forecasts. I have a question about the, your capex. Is the one billion what is? Is this just the company itself, or does that also include funds from the EU or for some other programs? So that's the capex of the company. So if I follow up that on terms of wagons, roughly 400 million to modernize rolling stock. You've also mentioned, you've called this optimizing wagons logistics. What will happen in 2018? How many wagons do you intend to renovate? What sort of funds have you allocated to that? What would be the case in 2018? And I would focus on this question right now. So the CapEx is of the company's funds. This is on top of everything else. So PK Picargo is applying for funds to um, buy platform cars, wagons for intermodal transport. So this is something that's separate from that. If that tender is resolved and we're hoping for that, then that would be achieved. But that probably won't be in the CapEx of 2018. I'm pre relating press information. We're applying for 800 million in funds. 50% should come from in-house resources for wagons. And we also want to expand uh, the terminal, like in Mawashavisa. So if you'll allow me, I'll give you a little bit more detailed information, perhaps not too detailed information. I'll ask uh, Mr. Vitold Baval, who's the uh, uh, chief operating officer, to tell us about the renovations we plan to uh, carry out in 2018. Perhaps it won't be in such great detail. So of that 1 billion, 844 million, this is a matter of investment into rolling stock. So we have two types of investments. The first one is replacement investments. So it's P3, P4, P5 renovations. This results from the law that we have to do periodic renovations every period of such a length. And so the cars or wagons have to go through this type of review control. And if we look at the rest, we want to allocates more than 650 million. The rest of the investments, I'm talking about investments in locomotives and uh, rail wagons, because both of them are subject to the same type of renovation refurbishment regime. The rest is linked to the modernization of locomotives, uh, some diesel. So we have investments in ST44 and SM48 where we change the designation of locomotives. So we want to have a train locomotive instead of a maneuvering locomotive. And so then we have the allocation or the designation of these locomotives to do um, heavy haulage work. This is quite important, having in mind the heavy load of investments by the rail track operator, where a large number of the trains have to have a movement from electric traction to diesel. And so the same is true of the second set of locomotives. So we have greater access and the efficiency of utilization. We also have to have in mind certain environmental and economical uh, factors because the modernized Locomotives are much more efficient. If we look at the average cost of renovation of a, a locomotive and a car wagon, it 
depends. It varies. It very much depends on the series of the rolling stock and the period in which the P4 locomotive or wagon is subject to. So the process calls for renovations as well as major renovations, so periodic as well as general overhaul. So we have detailed data, but I'd have to look at each series, each number. I'm just in second. The ultimate result depends on the tender where we would get the best offer to do that work. I'd like to emphasize that we've announced tenders for renovation and modernization for more than 100 uh, locomotives mentioned by Vitold Bavo, a management board member. It's a big undertaking. It's an important undertaking, one that we need to do also, not only with locomotives, but also wagons. We had higher costs in Q4 for external services. So on a quarter to quarter basis, can you see something in terms of renovations happening in Q4 of last year? And why do we have such a strong growth quarter on quarter? So ladies and gentlemen, in fact, Q4 of 2017, we commissioned a large number of locomotives for modernization because after we did a needs analysis for rail freight needs. And so a lot of this work was done under external services. How much in was that in terms of wagons or this is kind of a one-off. So it didn't happen in Q3 or the whole very basically. It's something that actually weighed down on the results. Now, in previous years, you could see a trend, a downward trend in terms of costs of maintaining rolling stock. And this was primarily a result of the market conditions and the fact that there had been the transportation summit that takes place in September, October, and up until that point of time, the maintenance costs, especially for wagons, was incurred up until then. And so in 2017, we made the decision and, and renovations. So in November and December, they were somehow extinguished. But this year, we made the decision that the needs for rolling stock in 2018 and further, we're not going to slow down the renovation program in the last months of the year. And so we decided to go at the same pace. And in terms of the numbers, we had more than 1,000 wagons per month on the P3, P4 level. 1,000 wagons uh, per month, more or less, was undergoing renovation. And so having this capex, is it the same case? When we talk about th external services that the company will use external services to a greater extent, and we can anticipate that for the full year 2018, uh, we'll see more of that, having in mind the larger capex and the need to do this swiftly. We're talking about two things. One is capex, where indeed uh, we've done that. I understand there's capex and, and alpex. So if you look at the amount of rolling stock that was involved in freight uh, turnover, so there was a need to there was a need to do some current renovations as a result of the normal operating process. If we look at 2018, we assume that the costs will be more or less evenly spread across the month because the transport the, the peak of transportation will somehow be spread over the full year because th the amount if we look at the uh, number of orders in january uh, quite high and we see that it's going to be more or less evenly spread at a high level across the year so we want to maintain our capital expense budget in order to ensure that we maintain our rolling stock. So what we saw in Q4, we could imply that this is the level of cost that we should anticipate to see across the 2018 year. 
Um, he didn't use his microphone when he responded. But I thank you. Okay, we can ask you for your subsequent questions, ladies and gentlemen. He's not using his microphone, so I can't hear him. I don't know if we've given a re report. This information has appeared in the media. What I can say is that we're considering different scenarios to improve our cap capability to do more renovations. If we look at the current periods and future periods, we can see that there's a need to increase this potential and in respect of the question in terms of the producer of cargo cars for example in Poland there is no such producer in Poland I have a question about your capex is the level of 2018 is this higher than average and in subsequent years, we can anticipate that we'd come back down to a 500, 600 million level, or is the 1 billion level something that will persist through 19, 20, and beyond? Mr. Bovell was so nice to remember that for over the last few years, the number of wagons and locomotives in activity was falling. And at the end of the seven. 2017 and 2018 is the time when we're rebuilding our rolling stock potential to a level that we need in order to be able to transport the goods. And so this is a higher level than the one we could forecast for upcoming years. But we have to take into consideration the need in subsequent years to replace rolling stock and not just modernize and renovate it because there's a time at which we have to replace existing rolling stock with new rolling stock. So do you think it'll be falling in ups this year and beyond? We don't anticipate any purchases of new rolling stock this year, so replacement. So we're talking more about uh, returning our rolling stock to the full level of operability. In 2019, I think we'll be thinking about purchasing some rolling stock. So we would have modernization as well as renovation as well as purchases. We're talking about such a large amount of rolling stock. We have repairs going on as well as the purchases of new we're talking about you know a large number of wagons and you know, a large number of locomotives if we look at this sheer number of improvements renovations will we see that number rising or falling in 2018 let me respond as follows if we look at the future figures this is something where we're going to have to estimate the market of freight transport if we would have the same pro forecast as we do now the ones we've identified then the amount of rolling stock that will be regained recovered to a level of operability in 2018 should enable us to deliver all of these services so if you do a p4 overview so then you would have a next six-year period where you don't have to do any repairs. So it's a six-year cycle. So we would have not only the ones that are decommissioned, but we're also talking about uh, the ones that had been decommissioned have to be recovered for delivering the greater quantity of goods. So having the current amount of rolling stock, we wouldn't be able to do that. So basically, you believe that for the next three to four years, you're going to have good business conditions. So if you look at 2018, is 
the modernization effort you're taking in 2018 will be sufficient to be able to accommodate the market's needs in subsequent years, 2019, 2020? Well, there are a couple of things. One is to define the necessary level of rolling stock in order to deliver a certain amount of volume, freight volume. The next, what well, we might see some being decommissioned next year, we have a six-year renovation cycle. That doesn't apply to 100% of the rolling stock in a given year, so it has a different pattern of renewal. So we have some rolling stock that will be taken out because of the period of useful life coming to an end. And we also have the certain number of locomotives that are active. And we'll have certain units that will be taken out of line because of the end of their useful life coming to a conclusion. But at the same time, we want to be able to uh, transport more freight. So basically, we're trying to reverse that trend where we had less and less capability to do that. OK, thank you very much. I'm from Aviva. I have a question about your CapEx. Your forecasts are for picky cargo, or is it for the group? It's for it's for picky cargo essay. What about the whole group? The capex for the group results will be published in the form of a stock report or a current report once the authorities, governing bodies, approve. Well, we've completed the corporate consents process for PKP Cargo, and so at one of the upcoming supervisory board meetings, they will approve the business plan for the group, and then we'll be able to deliver the, that information for the overall group. This is for the parent company. Are there any other further questions, ladies and gentlemen? I have a question. There is information about growth. If we look at the infrastructure and its capacity to handle these volumes in subsequent months, can we anticipate new bottlenecks emerging, having in mind the new investment program? So is what happening in January and February indicative of the barriers we'll face, or will there be more? We're cooperating closely and talking with the track operator, POK, and we've agreed on a plan of closures for the full year of 2018. We have joint task forces that analyze this on an ongoing basis, and basically there's a schedule to define the investment work done by POK. And there are also teams that react if there are any type of uh, deviation. So if we look at the transport plan, we embraced or onboarded the plans that uh, POK put together. So we need more rolling stock because it'll be used for a longer period of time we're convinced that we'll be successful of doing all of that without greater disturbance. And we gave you some information about the last couple of months of the year. So having worked together closely, uh, we were able to solve problems with um, transportation of coal without any difficulties whatsoever. I wanted to ask about your forecast for 2018. Is this going to be a trend that at your annual results conference you'll give forecast for the current year? My second question, could you explain to us why in the year when you talk about utilizing the full capacity and that uh, demand is higher than supply, you'll have 
in the beta that would only allow you to cover your replacement capex. Is this as a result of having closures of track? What is the reason for that? The fact that we're informing you about our intentions. I think the next management board of cargo, which in the near future will appear, I hope it will retain this or continue to follow this path because I think it's good to talk about forecasts. I believe the beginning of a good path, a good direction that we're following. And so one could consider whether or not the return on equity on assets are satisfactory. They're much better than the previous year, but we're not at the optimum level of 10%. It's a little bit of a textbook, uh, textbook approach. Well, it's there's There's still things to do. There's no doubt about that. I think that if we look at the completion of the investment work by the track operator, uh, PLK, which will make it pass possible to utilize the train cars more quickly, be able to move faster on the tracks, you'll be able to respond to customer needs better. Well, a company like Peekeeper Cargo will see um, growth by leaps and bounds in all of these parameters. It's quite clear. The investor work by PLK is a contributing element that determines the growth of cargo's expenses. If we want to move from community from A to C, you can't follow the direct path. Sometimes the best example is as follows. If you look at number seven, so this is the Lublin path, and you have to go, if you're going to Bogdanka or Pawanets, this is something that extend, the detour extends the distance. And that means you have rolling stock engaged for a longer period of time, over a longer distance. And then you need human capital to service that. And so we have higher costs for energy. So that all of that's true. And so we think that the 2018 plan is quite ambitious. But at the same time, we believe that we'll be able to deliver on that. And this will be the beginning point for us to deliver uh, good results every year in completing investments. Because as we complete investments, we're going to be able to have better transportation parameters. And we have a few more uh, intentions for subsequent years and we'll be able to continue improving the profit of the company. Another question, since we're talking about the annual the annual results a longer horizon, could you comment a bit about the age structure of the employees? Over the next two to three to four years, do you anticipate that you might have any problems in order to be able to achieve your operational targets? If I were to say that we don't see this problem, I would be lying, or I would appear to be a person who has a short-sighted vision. So we've identified certain gaps in our employment structure driven by age, and they can appear, but they don't have to appear amongst a certain group of employees. We talk about rare resources. So people who are linked to security, they have early retirement rights. They can utilize them, but they don't have to. But we're recruiting strongly and doing a lot of employee training. And so people will fill in those positions in terms of working as a train driver, being reviewers, people who are responsible for um, putting trains in place. And so we have a license to deliver training under our own system. We also cooperate with specialized companies, also from the PKP group, who are responsible for delivering vocational training at present. And looking at the near future, we don't identify such a risk, but we do identify a risk that we're trying to counter 
by running an intensive uh, training program, both within the company, so amongst our current employees, so people who have certain skills, formal skills, we put them through uh, training. We also work with the external labor market and we're looking and using the services of our own in-house training centers as well as external training centers. I have a question about your forecast for 2018. Based on what you've stated, you anticipate that freight transport will continue to grow and we can see that revenues will grow or will grow faster than the freight volume, so you'll have higher rates. But if we look at your margin at the EBITDA level, it's not growing too strong. We have greater utilization of rolling stock. We have a big operating leverage, and the margin is basically flat. It grows by 0.5% what's happening on the cost side that we won't see further improvements in the margin itself. Your question in terms of what's happening on the cost side, that margins aren't improving. Well, I'd respond to as follows, to that question as follows. So if we look at our commercial policy, the sales policy, which is the f f our ability to determine our revenues or income in a company like Pika Cargo. This is not a short structure, a short period. Oftentimes it goes beyond a one year period. Pika Cargo in 2018 will also be doing contracts that were signed in 2016 and 2017, but the pricing policy we are currently following as PKP Cargo will allow, allow us to endorse the assumption that the margins we command will improve substantially. I have one question. What are your banking covenants in terms of interest bearing debt? I'm not going to give you that information for two reasons. First, I'm not sure this is the right spot to do that. And secondly, I don't remember from head, from memory. We're talking about a debt in excess of two billion. I can tell you that all of the assumptions concerning the financing of CapEx, we don't violate any covenants in our credit facilities that we currently hold in Pekiba Cargo. This is a safe level of financing, and it doesn't assume that we're going to have, we certainly won't violate any covenants, nor will we need to imp increase any of the covenants. OK, thank you very much. We also have people online, and we have the following question. In POP, there was a statement by the CEO that you use net profit and uh, um, depreciation to find investments. How is that possible? That you want to spend on capex more than one billion, whereas you have only 161 million zlotys of net profit, and depreciation was less than 500 million zlotys. How do you reconcile those two figures? I'd like to draw your attention that the company has cash it hasn't used as well as unused credit facilities. I'd also like to mention that there's a tender underway to renovate 100 locomotives and we have a different method and source of financing those investments and it's not to be done by the uh, client so there's no need to obtain any external financing. So P.E. Picargo doesn't have to obtain any ex financing. And the last question from an online user, also from PDM. So the company has generated very good results in Q1. 
2017 Petro EBIT uh, uh, fell year on year as well as quarter on quarter. So what, according to the management, happened in Q4 2017, because you hadn't signaled that it was going to be a downward trend, is this a trend that one should assume to perpetuate over Q1 2018 and Q2 2018? Let me respond to this question as follows. Based on the information that was conveyed, the impact, well, in Q4, we had higher costs by because of the following reasons. One, we agreed on higher employee salaries, and they started in Q4 2017. In the first three quarters, we didn't have those higher salaries. That was one factor. If we also look quarter on, so year on year, in 2016, in Q4, if I'm correct in terms of my memory. We had a non-recurring event relating to the derecognition of actuarial provisions as a result of the law on Social Security. So the reduction in the retirement age, and that meant we were able to derecognize actuarial provisions of tens of millions of Zwadis. So if we compare the results on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis and year-on-year -year basis, gives us an incomparable base. But if we look at the year-on-year -year result, this shows the net profit. Well, we've been able to improve by 215 million Zwadis. The net result, and that's a big difference and the assumptions and that we have for Q4 freight um, turnover and volume, this is something that has continued to perpetuate in Q1 of this year, so January and February. Okay, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your attendance. We'd like to encourage you to talk with us uh, behind the scenes, we'll have some refreshments, and we'll invite you to come to the Q1 conference, which will take place in May of this year. Okay, thank you very much for your attendance, ladies and gentlemen.